This is Spunky. And Snarky. And we say, welcome Welcome to to the the show. show. Hello and welcome back. It's October. Can you believe it? I can't. It's going to be Christmas soon and I, I can't deal. Anyway, Halloween happens to be one of Spunky and my favorite holidays. So we decided to spend the whole month looking at some of our favorite Halloween shows and sharing some of our Halloween fun times. This week, I wanted to take a look at The Adventures of Ichabod Crane and Mr. Toad. I hadn't seen this in like a really long time. I remember bits of Ichabod Crane, the Mr. Toad, hardly at all. But rewatching it again, I have many questions, but we'll talk about that more in a little bit. The Adventures of Ichabod and Mr. Toad is a 1949 animated film produced by the Walt Disney Company. It consists of two segments. The first is based on the 1908 children's book, The Wind in the Willows by Kenneth Graham, and it's narrated by Basil Rathbone in the film. The second segment is based on the 1820 short story, The Legend of Sleepy Hollow by Washington Irving. In the film, the story is referred to as Ichabod Crane and is narrated by Bing Crosby. So the narrator starts off talking about how Mr. Toad is the most fantastical character ever. And we dive into the book and are visiting London. The story is set along a riverside. Then we've got the home of all of Toad's friends. We got Mr. Rat, the Mole, and then the Badger, and Toad. And Toad lives in this hall that's like the swankiest house of them all on the river. So the story starts off and you have Mole rushing to go meet up with Rat and they're going to have like tea time. And they get this letter from Badger who's like, shit be going down at Toad Hall and you need to get over here. Um, Is it just me or did Toad Hall kind of look like stately Wayne Manor from the 60s Batman series? Could be. be. (laughs) Maybe they used it as inspiration for their animation. It's It's swanky. Anyway. Well, it does have a trap door. So anyway, you see Badger and he's like about to have an aneurysm. He's going through like these bills and it's like destruction of lampposts, destruction of farm equipment, destruction of whatever. And he's basically trying to balance the Toad Manor books. I'm just saying that he must be a really good friend if he's going to balance your checkbook for you. Just saying. Yeah. And pay your bills. And Toad is a douchebag. Like, he don't give a fuck about his friends. Anyway, Badger is like freaking out and there's pounding on the door and it's all these people like with bills that I guess like Toad destroyed their property and they want somebody to pay. And Badger's like, you'll get your money. Just calm it down and slams the door. (laughs) So then the door knocks again. He's like, I told you to step off. And then he's like, oh, it's small and rad. And so he kind of tells his trouble. He's just like, you know, Toad is out of control. He keeps running around, destroying people's shit. He doesn't respect anybody. And I'm trying to, like, get his finances in order, but he doesn't give a shit. So basically, he tells the rat and the mole to stage an intervention. Pretty much. So rat and mole are like, okay, we'll see what we can do for our pain in the ass friend. So they go to try to find him out in the countryside. Meanwhile... We see this, like, cart and buggy just rampaging through the countryside. And it's Frog with his horse singing his song about how he loves to adventure. Yeah, he loves, like, the open road and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. He's got the buggy mania or whatever. And his horse is just singing along with him and having a gay old time. After their song about traveling off to nowhere, merrily, they stop and the horse, Cyril, Mr. Toad are talking when the rat and the mole show up. And he's like, oh, I'm so glad to see you. Want to come on an adventure with us? And the mole is about to climb on the cart and the rat's like, "Mm mm-mm, we here for serious business. So they're like, you need to stop destroying everything. But then all of a sudden, a motor car shows up and he's like, what is that? And his eyes get all like acid trippy, blue boy from Dragnet, like, <laughs> like crystal blue persuasion. 
And they're like rainbow spiral. And he all of a sudden just like he can't even form words. He just like sputters like a motor. And he's mm-hmm. pretending he's driving, but he's just like scooting his ass across the floor. <laughs> yeah. <which> is <laughs> weird. Anyway, so he's just like fixated. He can't even like think he just wants to drive. Apparently he gets like mania a lot or obsession as I like to call it. Chill mm-hmm. obsession. Uh, Because apparently, like, that was his obsession before was the horse and buggy. And now, like, once he saw the motor car, it's like, oh, that just, like, faded away quickly. And now it's motor mania is in effect. And they're like, oh, no, we cannot have this shit. Which is fair. Because I'm like, if he was already, like, running over all sorts of shit in his horse and buggy, like, he gonna kill somebody in this damn car. So Rat and Toad basically take him back to Toad Hall and lock his ass up in his room. And they feel bad because they're his friends. But they're trying to protect him. I'd be pissed. I'd be like, I'm your friend, but I have to be your babysitter because you can't fucking handle yourself. Yeah. It's like, that's why I don't have friends who get sloshed at bars. Just saying. (laughs) No one's got time for that. So they're trying to protect him and stop him from his mania. Well, of course, while they're guarding his door, Toad escapes out the window. And next thing you know, headline news. Toad is arrested for stealing a car. So then it turns into a uh, frog law and order where we Dum-bum. see his trial. <laughs> and I guess Toad's a lawyer because he decides to represent himself. Maybe he's just an idiot like most people who try to represent themselves. <laughs> And he's pretty cocky, so he probably thinks he can win. In fact, he does think he can win. And the prosecutor's pretty creepy and evil. It's weird, because in this, there's, like, the animal people, but then there's actual human people, too. Which it kind of, like, throws you <laughs> off. Because, like, the prosecutor and the judge are, like, humans, whereas, like, everyone else is animals. So the prosecution calls Molin Rat to the stand. And he's like, did you lock him up because you knew about the mania? You did, didn't you? And they're like, yeah. And, and he's like, no more questions. And then they call Badger and he's all like, is it true that you withheld funds from him so he was really broke? And then he's like, yeah. So that's when the prosecution rests. Toad's like, okay, we're going to tell you what really happened and so he calls your old proud bottom his cockney horse who is gonna tell the tale of what really happened so cyril tells everyone that he was there when he escaped and they saw a red car drive by and mr toad like instantly fell in love with this car he's like i gotta have it so he goes into this um, bar where the car is parked because he saw all these weasels get out of the car. There were like 100 weasels in this car. So he walks in and he's like, I got to have this car. I'll pay anything. And they're like, anything. So he doesn't have any money, though. So he's like, OK, I'll make a trade with you. So it turns out he traded Toad Hall for the car, which is a total douche move. You got poor Badger here, like nearly killing himself to like save Toad Hall. But no, Toad needs this car. So fuck you, Badger. Fuck you, Rat and Mole who are trying to help me out. Fuck everyone because I need this car. Yeah, we didn't even talk about Mr. Winky, the bar owner. Yeah, so there's a bar owner there. And so basically like Toad... And the weasel signed the contract that he's signing over the deed. And Winky, the barkeep, signs it as a witness. And so Toad's like, okay, I bought this car. So for his next witness, he's like, I have the person who's going to like nip this case in the butt. Let me call to the stand none other than the barkeep, Winky. And Toad's all like cocky. He's like putting on his gloves. He's about to leave because he's like, this case will be he's over. He's halfway out the door. It's like, Winky, you just tell me what happened. And Winky's like, he tried to sell me a stolen car. And he's like, say what? And then the next thing you know, it's like headline. Toad in jail for 20 years. Uh, it's like they try to appeal, can't get him out. I mean, his friends are like standing by their man. Yeah, they're trying to help him out. And you know, Toad wouldn't do the same. No, he wouldn't even be around. So time goes by, they kind of forget about the disgrace that was Toad, but Christmas is is around and everyone's jolly except for Toad, who's locked away in prison. And he's all crying, thinking about his friends and how he did them wrong. And how his mania affected his life in a negative way. He vows to never get struck by it again. 
But then the door to his cell opens and they're like, it's Christmas. We'll let you have a visitor. Your grandma's here to visit you. He's like, what? And then grandma comes in and it turns out it's really Cyril the horse. And Cyril's like, I brought you a Christmas present. It's a wig and a dress. We gonna escape. Then Toad gets like a skate mania. Because tonight there's gonna be a jailbreak. Somewhere in this town. Tonight there's gonna gonna be be a jailbreak. So don't Don't you be be around. around. So long story short, he escapes. And there's like this whole police chase. Yeah, so he's, like, running through the streets. He's still got, like, his ball and chain on, which he's using it to make, like, a curvaceous booty. And then, <laughs> Do you uh, look uh, like a lady? An officer, like, <laughs> stops him, and he's like, oh, no problems, officer. I'm just moseying in the long. And then, like, the chain drops out of his skirt. And he's like, ma'am, you dropped something there. And he's like, oh, no worries. And then he sees a, a ball and chain, and the chase is on. And so he's like running with this ball and chain which i don't know how that works but whatever and then he commandeers a train and then there's this big train yeah chase. he's like shoveling some coal but then there's a police train that starts chasing him and then they start shooting at him so they're crossing over this bridge on a lake and he's like i'm just gonna jump in the water as he sinks to the bottom with his ball and chain he laughs thinking about his escape from the cops But then he starts, like, kind of trying to get out and, like, gasping for air. And there's, like, a really creepy scene where his, like, hands are trying to claw out the water. He desperately tries to grab onto a tree branch. And then all of a sudden the camera pans to the left. And we're like, what the hell? I mean, at least there wasn't, like, a bubble of air. Yeah. So it cuts to Rat and Mole and they're having Christmas dinner. And... They wish Toad well, even though he's in jail. And all of a sudden, there's a crash of lightning, and you see a figure in the doorway. This lady comes in, but it turns out it's Toad! Rat's like, we're gonna have to turn you in, you know? Because you owe a debt to society. And so then they hear a thing at the door, and they think it's the police. But then it turns out to be Badger. Badger then tells Rat and Mole that... He just went by Toad Hall and all the lights are on. All the weasels are there, like, taking over the place. And he saw who was in charge. It was Mr. Winky all along. And Toad is innocent. And Toad comes down from the Christmas tree where he's hiding and he's like, I told you I was innocent. They're like, okay, well, we can't just tell people you're innocent. We need to, like, prove it. So we're going to have to go get the deed. To Indeed. prove that you <laughs> signed away Toad Manor and you didn't really steal the car. So they like take a rowboat and row down river and they paddle through the tunnel under the manor and they walk up and there's a like little button and it opens a wall into the like living room and all the weasels are like passed out drunk. Turns out that the deed is literally on Winky, like, stuffed down his shirt. So we're like, okay, he's sleeping over there. They go up to the second floor and string some bed sheets together. And they lower Mole. But then he gets bored too much. And Winky tries to use him as a pillow. And finally he gets free. And he gets the deed. But there was a weasel that was kind of tailing them. And he found out that about their secret passage and shows up and like blows a whistle and raises the alarm. But, and then they realize the deed's gone. Yeah. So weasels be everywhere throwing knives and shit. And they're passing the deed around trying to get away and paper airplane the deed to Frog. And then Frog starts throwing all these other paper airplanes to like throw off everyone. And they try to escape through the secret passage but mole doesn't get through so they have to go back but then they keep switching the secret passage and one of them doesn't get through but finally they grab mole (laughs) and then they're able to get away but then they're like oh no we didn't get the d but then toad's like didn't we and he pulls it out of his pocket and it's like yay so newspaper headlines toad is innocent And then it cuts to New Year's Day, where they're all celebrating Toad's innocence and having like a toast, uh, Ratty, Badger, and Mole. And then all of a sudden they hear something in the distance. Yeah. And it's Toad in an airplane. With Cyril. He's got a new mania. And that's the end. So they're celebrating Toad as this like fantastical person. No, Toad is a douche. 
Yeah, you shouldn't take advantage of other people to further your ambitions. It's like drug addiction, I guess. It's like any kind of addiction. Yeah. You're just you're so obsession. focused on like the one thing that you don't realize how your actions are affecting other people, especially the people who care about you. So, yeah, I mean, he didn't learn his lesson on freaking all. And I hope Badger and Rat and Mole just like cut him off. Like, they don't need people like that in their lives and move along and live peacefully on the river. So you ready to get into the second half of this episode? I am. All right, so we're starting now Ichabod Crane, which is actually really called The Legend of Sleepy Hollow, but they changed it for this movie. So we start off with Ichabod Crane reading a book and strolling down the street. Making his way downtown, walking fast, reading a book and he don't look... <laughs> So Ichabod Crane, who's the new schoolmaster in town, and he's like all lanky and he's got a small head and a big nose. He like gets annoyed with the kids in his classroom, but if their moms make good food, he plays nice so he can like come over for dinner. So he kind of just does his own thing. People tease him. And there's this one particular, like, bully in town, Rom Bones. And he's, like, your typical Gaston. I was thinking that while I was watching, because, like, the part in the beginning where Ichabod's walking with his book uh, reminded me of Beauty and the Beast, where Belle's reading. Uh And then you see Rom Bones, and he looks like Gaston. So maybe when they did Beauty and the Beast, they took inspiration from them. Yeah. So Ichabod tries to socialize with all the ladies. Not that he's particularly smitten with them. He just wants their food. But then Miss Katrina comes along. And there's a whole song about this Katrina who's like the belle of the whole town. And of course, she's the daughter of like a rich farm owner. And Brahm's also in love with her. And she decides that she's going to kind of use Ichabod to make Brahm work a little harder for affection. Yeah, because Brom scares off all her suitors. So there's like a whole scene where Ichabod and Brom are back and forthing, and Ichabod just seems to be having the upper hand in like winning Katrina's affections. And then there's going to be a big Halloween event at Katrina's house. And Katrina wrote specifically to Ichabod, like, you should come, heart, heart. So Ichabod is all, like, smitten that he gets to go to this Halloween event. So he gets all fancied up and heads to her house for the party. And he's dancing with Katrina. And you see Brom sitting on the bench all jealous. And then he sees this other lady. Decides, oh, I'm gonna, like, grab her and dance. And then, like, cut mm-hmm. him and then dance with Katrina. But, of course, his plan backfires because this lady's cray-cray and just, like, dances like a maniac. She's a maniac, maniac on the floor. So, Brom just cannot win and is all upset. But he knows that Ichabod is superstitious. He spies him, spills some salt, and then he's, like, horrified and, like, quickly, like, dashes some over his shoulder. I mean, even earlier we saw, like, Ichabod during his main song, like, he didn't step under the ladder. He made sure the black cat didn't cross his path. Brom tells his tale of the Headless Horseman since it's Halloween and it's spooky story time. Yeah, and he's going to scare the shit out of Ichabod. Which he does. Katrina thinks it's cute and laughs at him. But then the night ends and Ichabod has to ride home. And it's the witching hour. So he's riding along and he's hearing all these crazy noises of like owls hooting and frogs croaking. And he starts getting scared. And then he thinks he hears like the clomping of horse feet. Mm. And he's like starts to freak out thinking it's the headless horseman. But then he realizes it's just some cattails like banging against the log. And then he just kind of laughs like, oh yeah, it's just my silly superstitions. And then he hears someone creepy laughing with him. And then he goes, oh shit, and looks up and sees the Headless the Horseman. Horseman. And then the chase ensues where, like, he's trying to, like, cut his head off and they're racing through the forest. He's not trying to take his horse to the Old Town Road. He's trying to get the fuck out of there. <laughs> so there's lots of silly antics where, like, his neck hits, like, a tree branch and he swings over it and lands on the head of this horseman's horse instead of his own horse. Or he thinks he's escaping. Then he realizes his horse is running the opposite direction and all this stuff. But he's like, okay, I remember from the song, if I just get to the bridge, I'll be okay. And so he's about to get through the bridge. 
left and you see the horseman just like stop like he can't go on the bridge but then he like throws his pumpkin head through the bridge after Ichabod and then the next day all that's there was Ichabod's hat and a smashed pumpkin and they never saw Ichabod again and Katrina married Brom but then it was rumored that Ichabod was still alive. He just married some rich widow down the road. Basically, he hightailed it out of town. And that was the end. I'm like, so was Brom really the headless horse? Yeah, that's what I wanted to know, too. <laughs> like, that was my first because question. Because the horse hit that he rode in on earlier looked like the head- headless horseman's horse. But... And there was, like, the pumpkin head at the party. Yeah. And all this stuff. So was it, like, Brom's attempt to get Ichabod out? I have some things to say about Ichabod, too, because he's also kind of a dick. Yeah. He just wanted to marry Katrina for her money. But she was using him, too. So they were all kind of assholes in this situation. Yeah, I think Brom was a headless horseman. Yeah. There's a really good Murder, She Wrote episode that kind of takes on the legend of Sleepy Hollow, but it's way different. Brom, Brom ends up getting killed. (laughs) I, I wasn't impressed with, like, either of these. I will say the animation is excellent. I do like the 50s songs that are very like, ooh, Ichabod Crane. Some of the music, it makes me nostalgic. Yeah, I love like early Disney animation. But I didn't feel like either of these stories were like worth watching again. Yeah, I felt the same way. I think I was hoping for a better moral or a better outcome. I guess I never realized the whole thing about Ichabod because it's the one I watched most of the time when I was a kid. But I guess I just probably saw like the Headless Horseman part, not the rest of it. (laughs) Yeah. Let's head into the brain basement. All right, now it's time for the brain basement. Since we watched the Mr. Toad episode today, I want to talk a little bit about the Mr. Toad ride at Disneyland, which is pretty fun. A lot of the old rides at Disneyland are kind of childish, but it's fun to act stupid when you're on them. (laughs) And the Mr. Toad ride is kind of fun in that regard as well. You get in your little car and then there's just a bunch of screens that come out. I didn't really know the Mr. Toad's story. So what I gathered when I was on the ride was basically that Toad was running around like driving his car crazy and that he either like almost hit someone or hit someone. And they showed the trial scene with the judge, but I didn't realize it was about him stealing a car. Like I just assumed he like needed to pay for the damaged property and stuff because he was crazy driving. But in this one, like he kind kind of escapes somehow there's not a lot of details it just happens as it happens but then like there's a train like coming at him and next thing you know there's like a hell scene so you think he died and went to hell and then that's when you pop out the end of the ride in retrospect that's probably what should have happened to toad in the actual cartoon because he was a douche i'm sorry i keep saying that but like he had three good friends who were trying to like help him out and he just could not get his shit together yeah this Mr. Toad part talks about obsession and addiction to things. And we've all been there. We've all been obsessed with certain things, but not to that extent. I mean, I'm like that. Like I have phases where I really like something and then I want to buy a bunch of stuff about, about it. I mean, I can just think through my life. Yeah, I usually get that with, like, bands where I'll, like, be really into, like, a particular band or artist. And then I'll move on to, like, another band or artist. And then I get really obsessed with that one. And then move on. You know, it keeps going through my life. I can think of many times that's happened. I'm like that with things, too. But I'm also, like, I want to have all the things. Like, if there's a set, like, I want to have all the sets. I have a collector's mentality and I'm like that in video games too where like I want to be a hundred percent completionist. Oh so you know with video games I don't give a shit because (laughs) I'm just like as long as I finish the main story that's fine but I don't care about doing like the little extra things. You know I remember in Castlevania where I was like you could become a master of like all these different like artifacts and I thought it was hilarious because I became a bible master. (laughs) Which, if you've been listening, you know I'm not religious at all. But you would, like, throw the Bible up and it would, like, spin around and, like, kill, like, demons for you. (laughs) But, yeah. I'm currently obsessed with BTS and need to have all the DVDs and everything. I'm into manga. I don't buy as much as I used to, but I used to buy a ton. 
Yeah, there's nothing really obsessed with at the moment that I can think of. But yeah, I've had my moment. <laughs> All right, that's it for the brain basement. We'll see you in the music spotlight. All right, and welcome to the Music Spotlight, where today's topic is creepy transportation songs. First up on the list is <laughs> a song from the movie Silence of the Lambs and other movies. It's Q Lazarus with Goodbye Horses. This song really does have a creepy feel to it. Well, if you've seen the movie, <laughs> you know it's really creepy. <laughs> It's been a while since I've seen Silence of the Lambs. I don't really remember, but apparently it's when he tries on his skin suit. On that note, moving along to number two, <laughs> where we have Duran Duran with A Night Boat. You know, Duran Duran's one of my favorites, and I've been waiting to put them on the list for a long time. <laughs> and I love them. But this song's really creepy. If you've seen the video, which I highly recommend you check out, it's very similar to the Thriller video, and it was made before that. But it's got that same kind of, like, vibe, so you might want to check that out and do a comparison, because huh. it's perfect for Halloween. All right, uh, moving along to number three, we got Ozzy Osbourne, of course, and going off the rails on a crazy train. Yeah, love Ozzy. This one's a classic. Since there was a whole train scene in Mr. Toes, of course, we got to bring a train song. Yeah. Number four is Stan Ridgeway with Drive, She Said. For those that don't know, Stan Ridgeway was in the 80s new wave group Walla Voodoo, who had the hit Mexican Radio. This song is about a lady who commandeers his taxi as she's escaping from a bank robbery. Like one of those like story songs where they're telling a story and it's, it's a good song. Last on the list, you gotta travel somehow. So we decided that number five, you should take ACDC's Highway to Hell. I'm on a highway to hell. I just watched a documentary on ACDC a couple days ago. Well, it was more about like Angus and Malcolm's brother and how they like did a bunch of songwriting and how they produced like ACDC's first albums. It was good. Yeah, this song's awesome. And yeah, ACDC's great. So our honorable mention is by Chris Ray and it's The Road to Hell. Now, this song's a weird song, but I like it. This is another story-type song, and Chris Ray wrote it when he was stuck in traffic somewhere in the UK. It's a really cool song. First, it's like spoken word, but then it kind of like kicks in. It's like a slow build, and it's really good. And that's it for our music spotlight. If you want to check out our songs in full, you can check them out on our website. Thanks for joining us for our first week of October and our extreme Halloween spooktacular. Next week, we'll have another Halloween favorite coming at you. So join us and we'll see you next time. If you want to drop us a line, you can email us at spunkynsnarkyshow at gmail.com. You can check us out on our website at spunkynsnarkyshow.wordpress.com. And if you want to leave us a voice message, you can check us out on our anchor page, which is anchor.fm slash spunkynsnarkyshow. Thanks again for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Peace.